The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. My name is Banaking Maximilian. And we are going to have a lesson in the opposite science physics. Before we enter into our lesson, we shall correct the assignment of the previous lesson, which reads as follows. Two ways traveling or two uh, traveling sinusoidal waves described by the wave equations y1 and y2 as shown on your slides, where x, y1, and y2 are in meters and t in seconds. Determine the equation of the stationary waveform by the superposition of these two waves. And these are the equations of the progressive waves given for us to use them to produce a stationary wave. So we see that from the equation, we can obtain k, which is the coefficient of x in the equation, and we can obtain omega here, which is the coefficient of t in the equation. And the amplitude is, uh, the amplitudes are the same for both equations. The form of the equation of a stationary wave is y is equal to 2a sine omega t cos kx. And if we substitute this information into the equation, we are going to obtain this expression. And of course, the final expression is 10.00 sine 1200 pi t cause 4.00 pi x in all in meters. So that is the equation of the stationary wave that is formed from the superposition of the two progressive waves. <laughs> Our lesson for today is lesson 9 and uh, the title of the lesson is Stationary Waves in Strings and Pipes. The lesson shall proceed according to the following plan, learning outcomes, prerequisites, puzzling problems, learning activities, Summary and assignment. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to define fundamental harmonic and overtone frequencies. Calculate the different modes of waves in stretch strings and pipes. Calculate the speed of waves in strings. Describe an experiment to determine the speed of sound in air. Of course, in this case, using resonance in air columns. The previous knowledge required for this lesson is in stationary waves. And since you have done it in the previous lesson, you should be able to answer the following questions. 
How is a stationary wave form? How is a stationary wave form? Your answer is correct. Then a stationary wave is formed when two progressive waves with the same frequencies, amplitude, and traveling in opposite directions superpose. When two progressive waves having the same frequencies, amplitude, and traveling in opposite direction when they superpose. Next question. Sketch a wave profile representing a stationary wave. Sketch a wave profile representing a stationary wave. If you are correct, then it should be as follows, where the end represents the notes and then the A's represents the anti notes and the distance between two successive notes or the distance between two successive anti notes gives lambda over 2, which is half a wavelength. The puzzle for our lesson is as follows. What are the string? Sorry, we take it over again. Why are the strings of a guitar made up of different sizes? And why does the guitar player press the strings from different points when the guitar is played. So that is our puzzle that we are going to answer in the course of this lesson. The first activity for this lesson is as follows. Play the strings of a simple musical guitar one after the other. So play them one after the other and observe the notes of sound produced from them. The second, the second activity is as follows. Play only one string in the guitar and in this case, press the string at different position while playing. So you press the strings from different position and observe what happens or the sound produced by the vibrating portion of the string. So what do you observe when you do this? That we are going to answer in the course of our lesson. Activity number two. Get different local flutes of different lengths and blow air into them, one after another. And of course, observe the sound produced from these flutes. So, what do you observe? Now, in the first case, where the strings of guitars were played, the guitar string produced sound notes of different tones when they are played. So they don't produce the same sound. Their sound differ in tone. And why do they differ in tone? That is what we shall be answering in the course of our lesson. Now, when air is blown into flutes of different lengths, they produce sound notes of different tones also. And why is the uh, why, uh, what is the cause of this? Why should different lengths of flutes produce different sound? That is the question we are going to answer in this lesson. Activity number three shall comprise watching, of course, the formation of waves on the string as shown on this simulation. So we observe again. So at this case, the string is vibrating in one loop. Now when we increase the frequency gradually, the number of loops 
change. The number of loops change. Then we'll continue to increase the frequency. And then now we have two loops. So when we increase the frequency further from this point, the number of loops increase. And we are now having three loops. Now we have four. And of course, the number of loops. So how do we call these loops? We are going to answer that question in the course of our lesson. So what have we observed in the simulation? So we have seen stationary waves produced on the string and the number of loops of the stationary waves increase with increase in frequency. That is what we have observed. And now, what do we mean by fundamental frequency, which we represent it by F subscript zero? It is the lowest resonance frequency a system can vibrate with. Lowest resonance frequency a system can vibrate with. The next is harmonic frequency. And it is the resonance frequency which is equal to an integral multiple of the fundamental frequency. Therefore, if F0 is the fundamental frequency, then F0, 2F0, 3F0 are the first, second, and third harmonic frequencies, respectively. Therefore, the first harmonic frequency, F0, is equal to the fundamental frequency. And generally, if we are looking for the nth harmonic frequency, then we can use the expression Fn is equal to Nf0. What is an overtone frequency? It is a resonant frequency which is greater than the fundamental frequency. And an overtone frequency can be an integral multiple of the fundamental frequency, or it may not be. So that is the difference between the overtones and harmonics. An overtone must be greater than the fundamental, whereas a harmonic can be equal to the fundamental frequency. Now, stationary waves in stretch strings. And uh, examples of instruments that produce waves in stretch strings include a guitar, a violin, harp, and a cello. So those are examples of string instruments. And we go to the fundamental mode for waves in string. And the frequency of the fundamental mode is called the fundamental frequency. And the fundamental mode is the lowest possible form of vibration we can obtain on the string, which is shown here. And if we consider the length of this string to be L, therefore, the waveform is lambda over 2, half a wavelength. And let's denote it lambda 0 because it's the fundamental. Therefore, that length L is lambda over 2, or lambda 0 is 2L. Remember that the frequency is calculated by speed all over wavelength. So, meaning that F0 should be V over lambda 0, and of course F0 should be V over 2L, because lambda 0 is 2L. So this expression gives the fundamental frequency for waves in string. Take note of that expression. Now, in the second mode of vibration, the string now vibrates in two loops as shown. And remember that one loop is half a wavelength. Therefore, the two loops should form a wavelength. And of course, L, if L is still, we are still using the same string of length L. Therefore, L in this case is lambda 2. And of course, 
since f is equal to v all over or f1 is equal to v over lambda 1 where we did not lambda 1 because it's the uh, first uh, overtone month then we can substitute our lambda 1 2l in this expression to have v all over 2l inside here we can multiply and divide by 2 to bring out the factor of f0 and that gives us 2f0 in that equation therefore the first overtone month is equal to the second harmonic frequency let's go to the third uh, or the second overtone month where the strings vibrate further with another additional loop to form three loops which is t of length l and in this case the fraction of a wavelength is given by three all over two as shown there three over two lambda two and now l is equal to this length therefore lambda two should be two l over three now remember that Remember that L is in the above here. Lambda 2 is 2L over 3. So we can substitute in this equation. And when we do that, we have 3 V all over 2L. Remember V over 2L is the fundamental frequency. Therefore, F2 should be 3F0. And we conclude here that the second overtone frequency is equal to the third harmonic frequency and if you continue this way then the third will be equal to the fourth harmonic frequency the fourth overtone will be equal to the fifth harmonic frequency and the fifth overtone the sixth harmonic frequency and the general formula to look for the nth overtone is given by Fn is equal to n plus 1 F0. Now the speed of sound in string is given by this expression V is equal to the square root of T over mu. T here stands for the tension. <coughs> the tension in the string. Mu stands for the mass per unit length of the string. And the mass per unit length is calculated by the mass of the string divided by the length of the string. Now, since the fundamental mode is V over 2L, or the fundamental frequency is V over 2L, as we have seen, we can represent, uh, we can substitute V by the square root of T over mu. And that gives us this equation for the fundamental frequency in terms of tension length and mass per unit length and to calculate the nth uh, harmonic frequency we can use this equation now stationary waves in closed pipes the waves uh, these are waves produced in a pipe in which one of the ends is closed and examples of instruments that produce waves in closed pipes include a whistle, a flute, and a bottle. When you blow air into this instrument, they produce waves in pipes. The fundamental mode for waves in pipes looks like the one shown on your slide, where we have one quarter of a wavelength which is half a loop half a loop gives one quarter of a wavelength lambda zero over four and l is the length of the vibrating air column and this c is that small distance between the tube and the tuning fork is called the end correction and if we we can see very well that lambda zero over four is l plus c and we can neglect C here. If we neglect C, then lambda zero is 4L. And of course, since lambda is V over F zero, therefore lambda should be uh, 4L. And uh, 
If we make f the subject of this expression v over f0 is 4l, therefore f0 is v all over 4l. And this expression gives the fundamental frequency for waves in closed pipes. So this in our second month, another has been another loop has been added. A loop has been added to give three lambda one over four. And of course, three lambda one over four is equal to L plus C. And if we neglect C, then lambda one should give us four L over three. And lambda should be lambda one. Since lambda one is V over F1, when we substitute lambda one there, our F1 will give us three F0, meaning that the first overtone frequency for waves in the closed pipe is equal to the third harmonic frequency. Now going to the next mode, the second overtone mode is now vibrate with one additional loop giving five lambda two over four and uh, it is still the same length, meaning that our V all over F2 will be 4L all over 5 in this case. And it will finally give us F2 to be 5F0. Now, if we observe and uh, we continue with this uh, mode, F3 will be 7F0, F4, 9F0, and we can conclude that the N over tone frequency for waves in closed pipe is 2N plus 1F0. Now, we also look at waves in open pipes, and these are waves in pipes that are open at both ends, and an example of instrument include, examples of instrument include uh, saxophone and trumpets. Now, this is the fundamental mode for waves in the open pipes. And here, the frequency is F0 is equal to V over 2L because lambda over 2 forms these uh, two half loops from lambda, lambda over 2. And that reduces to F0 is equal to V over 2L, just like waves in strings. And if we continue in the same mode, F1, it will be 2F0. And if you look at your diagram, the lambda, uh, one complete loop and uh, two half loops will be equal to lambda, meaning that L is lambda. And uh, since f is v over lambda, it means that this expression can uh, reduce to f1 is equal to 2f0, meaning that first of a tone mode is equal to second uh, harmonic frequency. Now, if we continue similarly, F3 will be 4F0, F4 will be 5F0, and so on. Meaning that these harmonics or overtones for waves in open pipes follow the same format like those for waves in string. And uh, this is the expression that we have seen for calculating the end overtone for waves in the strings which is also used to calculate waves in open pipes. Now we describe an experiment to determine the speed of sound in air using resonance in air column. And here we are having a resonance tube that is dipped into water in a measuring cylinder. And uh, this tuning fork, this is a tuning fork and uh, the various quantities to be measured are shown. Now here, the resonance tube is completely immersed in water in the measuring cylinder, and the prongs of the vibrating tuning forks are held close to the open end of the tube. The, the tube and the tuning forks are slowly lifted out of water until the first loud sound is heard. 
where resonance has occurred. When the first loud sound is heard, the tube is held fixed at that position and the length of the vibrating air column is measured using a meter rule. So you measure from the water surface up to the end of the tube. The frequency of the tuning fork is read directly from it and recorded against the length. A series of different tuning forks are used to determine the length of the air column at first resonance and the corresponding frequencies of the tuning forks are recorded against the length in a table shown under observation here. So these are the values of the length that will be recorded here and the frequencies will be recorded here. And uh, now processing the information from our diagram, we see that lambda over 4 is L plus C and uh, this equation can be uh, rearranged to give 1 over F is equal to 4 over VL plus 4C all over V. And when we plot a graph of 1 over F against L, then the slope is going to give us 4 over V as seen. This equation is of the form Y is equal to MX plus C, the equation of a straight line. And now if we want to calculate the speed of sound in air, so it's given by this expression V is equal to 4 over slope, which is our conclusion that when the value of the slope is substituted into this equation, V will give us the speed of sound in, in air. And the precautions here, the experiment is carried out in a quiet environment to enable the loud sound to be heard clearly. The scale of the meta rule is viewed perpendicularly at the point of the reading to minimize parallax error. Avoid uh, mentioning uh, using this precaution as the eyes are placed perpendicularly. The eyes cannot be removed and placed on the scale. You will not be able to see if that happens. Now, first exercise, state factors affecting the frequency of waves in stretch strings. If, if you are correct here, then the first factor is the length of the string, second factor, tension in the string, and the mass per unit length. So from the equation relating them to frequency, you can determine what, uh, how each of these quantities vary with frequency. Second exercise, a string of mass 20 gram and length 5 meters is fixed on two vertical walls so that it is taut. It is made to vibrate in five loops and the frequency measured is 1000 hertz. Calculate the wavelength of the wave, speed of the waves and tension in the string. Now remember that we are told that it vibrates in five loops. These are the five loops. And if we, the length of these five loops is five meters L. And these five loops is five half wavelengths. Five half wavelengths, which is five lambda over two. So this five wavelengths is equal to L. And if you make lambda the subject, it will be 2L over 5. And when you substitute, lambda gives us 2 meters. Now the next is to calculate the speed, which is calculated as lambda F. We have just calculated our lambda to be 2 meters and our frequency given to be 1,000 hertz. And when we substitute, the speed is 2,000 meters per second. And uh, the next is to calculate the tension. Now, tension is related to velocity by this equation. And uh, if we make speed the subject, it will be, if we make uh, uh, t 
ten, uh, tension the subject, it will give us t is equal to v squared of over mu. And remember, mu is m all over l. So if we substitute all these values there, the tension will give us 1.6 times 10 to the 6 Newton. Remember, putting your answers in standard form. So in this lesson, we have seen the fundamental frequency, harmonic and overtone frequencies. We have made uh, them vibrate in different modes. We have seen the speed of sound in strings, and we have described the experiment to determine the speed of sound in air. Uh, so the conclusion here is that the strings are made of different sizes to give the string different mass per unit length and uh, are pressed also from different position to give it different vibrating length which all give different tones. Now this is our assignments that you are expected to read it and then you make sure that you do it before our next lesson which will have as topic Double effect. On a tege si, ma tege yop. On a tege minga, ma tege nyom. On a tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Gani bana, ma tege mot. Gani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa tina bia jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 